Captain and Pangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features and all creatures. Livingston, do tell. What do Vincent Price, Caroline Monroe, Joseph Cotton, and Terry Thomas all have in common? I presume they all appear in the ludicrous film you intend to foist upon your viewers. That's right! Except for the ludicrous film part, you silly man. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. The tall man with a morose scowl fastened to his otherwise stately visage would be my dutiful butler, Mr. Livingston. And the tiny, soft-spoken lass over to this side, whose gentle nature and demure disposition can out an amiable soul content with leading a humane and moderate life, would be my housemate and charge, Miss Tangella. And we have a most super-spectacular, ultra-delicious evening of stylistic and cultivated entertainment in store for you. Because for the first time in the history of our humble little program, we shall present for your viewing pleasure the abominable Dr. Five. The most abominable feature of this film is its vacuous script. Now, what's she up to? Need you even ask? I suppose not. Onward. The story revolves around a musical prodigy whom unfortunately crashes his automobile upon news of the untimely death of his lovely wife during a botched surgical procedure. The now deformed and vengeful Dr. Fibes sets out to seek retribution upon those who took from him the very love of his life. It's been many years since I've seen this film, but I think there's also a part about dinosaurs, a time machine, and a robot named Preston with the unique ability to internally brew flavored coffee, which is then dispensed from his backside into square-shaped styrofoam cups. I might perhaps be thinking of a different film with the robot thing. In any case, the movie is a phenomenally fun film that the entire family will cherish for many years to come. So don't go away for this to be another night of Vincent Price Fright, right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Where did this bloody thing come from? Venice, I believe. Maybe you should put some trousers on it. I don't want to look at that bum all night. Welcome to Creature Features. It's that night of the week where we show a movie and you sit and send us complaints because the movie is probably not going to be any good now, is it? No, not tonight. You will not be sending us complaints tonight because it's going to be a fun movie, right? You've seen this film. And you've probably seen this film. Uh. See? So it's going to be a good film. I've watched five minutes of this film, so I'm going to be about as informed about this film as you are. However, uh, it shall be fun, right? Because it's a fun film. I don't think so. She thinks so. <clears throat> I shall go with her opinion and not yours. Any case, uh, no guest tonight. Uh, we did not get a guest tonight because it was just not a good night to get a guest, right? I guess. There were contractual issues. Contractual issues. Well, you know, that happens sometimes. And that's because, you know, the whole guest thing, it's complicated. You know, you've, you've got to do a contract and then you've got to fly them out. And then we've got to put them at Hotel Lododo. 
or someplace like that. And you have to take out the green M&Ms. And the green M&Ms mm. and all that sorting of the candies. Yes, mm. yes, indeed. So, uh, no guests tonight, no problem, because we're going to keep you entertained with this film and with Tangela's shenanigans. And she brought her toothy rabbit mm. out just for you. Right? She only brings this out for you. Rest of the week, never, never see it, do we? Thank goodness. Thank goodness. So uh, tonight's film, The Abominable Dr. Fibes, 1971. And uh, this has got a lot of famous people in it. It's got Vincent Price, Carolyn Monroe, although she doesn't seem to be in it very much in this one. And then it's also got, uh, who else? Uh, Terry Thomas. British actor. You know Terry Thomas. No, no, no. He's the bloke with the gap between his teeth. He's right. always like doing a proper, oh, I don't know, type character. He's very posh. No. No, he's, he's fun. Love that guy. And uh, who else we got? Uh, somebody else famous, right, Tom? Joseph Cotton. Joseph Cotton. Joseph no, Cotton. Joseph, he's quite famous. He was quite the actor. In fact, he did yeah. a Hitchcock film over in Santa Rosa, close to here, very close to here, called, uh, what's it called? Uh, Shadow of a Doubt. Shadow of a Doubt. It's a Hitchcock movie from the 40s, I think, right? And uh, Shadow of a Doubt, and they, they filmed it like maybe 20 miles from here. So it's, it all connects together. Who knows? All right, we're going to start this film. And when we come back, uh, we're going to chat with you some more. And then we'll go back to the film. And then we'll do some mail. And then we'll chat with you some more. And we'll, we're going to have fun. So.
morning, It's a damn strange business, Tom. A man literally shredded to death right in the heart of London. That's the last one. Bats appearing out of nowhere. I don't know. It just doesn't, doesn't make sense. Ooh, they're nasty-looking little blighters, aren't they? Uh, seen them in Mandalay. Suck your throat dry, they one. Yeah, well, that's where they belong, in the tropics. I mean, not, not, not here, not in a place like this. Yes, all right, thank you very much. Take them all off to the laboratory, would you? Right, sir. And have them double-checked for rabies. Yes, sir. Now, Morgan. Yes, sir. Where the hell are you? I'm up here, sir. Oh, so you are. When you've finished up there, I want you to question the butler again. There may be something he's overlooked. Very good, sir. Remember when you were in Scotland at the beginning of last week? Yes. Well, there was another surgeon who died. A Dr. Thornton. Well, what about him? It was more the way he died. This reminded me of it. He was stung to death by bees in his library. Bees in his library? That's right. Before we arrived, the whole place must have been swarming with them. I've got the file on my desk now. You should have seen his face. That whole flesh was a mass of, well, boils. Boils? All over. Stings, I suppose. Oh. I wonder if there is a connection. Hmm. Well, I'll go through the file. God knows what we've got. Two doctors, both dead. Oh, don't take him out like that. At least cover his face up. Hello, YouTube viewers. Have you subscribed yet? I see a few of you have forgotten to do so. I am somewhat disappointed. Please subscribe. Thank you. Well, you know, it's I'm not used to seeing her as as tall as you, mm. or almost as tall. It it makes you look rather small. In the skull, yeah, that's not a real skull, by the way, just in case you did not know. But those are real shoes. Show us your shoes. We never see your shoes. It's nice shoes. Anyways, welcome back to Creature Features. We're watching the abominable Doctor Fibes, 1971. It's a good film, so far, right? You agree? Vacuous script. He's he's a bit of a skeptic. He's he's a bit of a curmudgeon. He's he's not a happy individual when it comes to these films. Now, what would we, f what could we show that you would like? What would make you happy? Vampire films, good ones. Listen to him. He has hated every single horror film we've shown, and he's asking for a vampire film. Now, I think he wants one of those artsy vampire films where it's, it's a musical. Nosferatu. Been, no, that's what you want, is a musical. Nosferatu where they're like singing, is a oh, one. I shall bite your neck, I'm a musical. Oh, please. Are you getting dizzy up there? Yeah? All right. Yeah, maybe we, this should be a permanent fixture for when you have to sit in the chair. You'll be way up there, and you can help him, like, read mail and stuff. Anyways, uh, fun fact about this film, uh, the press agents for this film claimed that this was Vincent Price's 100th film. It was not. It was not. It was a lie. It was a lie they told to the public to get them to come see this film. A fabrication. A complete and utter fabrication. But uh, nope, he went on to do probably 100 more films, right? I mean, he was, he was working a lot in the 70s. I think Vincent Price made all of his money in the 1970s. I could be wrong. I think yeah. he did a good job with Michael Jackson. Do you remember when we had his daughter? Yeah. Yes. It's nice. Victoria Price. Victoria Price. You know, I think she knows more about Vincent Price than Vincent Price did. Now, true fact. She was, I, I, any question I asked her, I asked her, like, what size shoe he wore and things like that. And 
She had an answer every single time. She would know. She, well, no, I wouldn't expect anybody to know my shoe size. She doesn't know my shoe size. She's not your daughter either. No, but she could look in my closet sometimes and look at my shoes. You know, put them on like a child and walk around. I think you should count your shoes, actually. Like E.T., right? I don't know. Anyways, what do you say we get back to this film? Please. Yes? Yes? Off we go, back to the abominable Dr. Fibes. Don't you dare go away, it gets better, I hope. told me this was a, a masked affair. For me. How very elegant. But my dear fellow, it's beautiful. Say, jolly fine party, what? Don't believe we've met. My name's Hargraves, Dr. Hargraves. I'm a psychiatrist, actually. Head shrinker. <laughs> I say, would, would you oblige some fancy catch? Much obliged. Now, point me towards the ladies. As short-staffed as it is, and you want me to give you more men to go charging off on one of your half-baked theories? It's ridiculous. Anyway, medical men die every day. I'm aware of that, sir. Good. They're composed of the same flesh and blood as you and I. I'm aware of that, too, sir. I happen to have seen rather a lot of their flesh and blood in the past few days. 
and another thing. Suppose the press get hold of this. Don't you talk to me about the press, Trout. You keep any ideas you've got to yourself on that one. Mention this to the press and you know as well as I do. Given half a chance, they'd whip up a panic story overnight. The whole damn place will be in an uproar. It was not my intention. Well, it's certainly not mine. I want no statements. Can you imagine what they'd make of bats, bees, and... And what? Frogs. Exactly. Why don't you go and reread Aesop's fables? And perhaps next time you come to me with a rather more pertinent theory. That's all right. Look, three men have died, sir. All in the medical profession. Does that not suggest... No, it damn well doesn't. There are some very strange people practicing medicine these days. me having the evening off? No, no, no. I shall rather enjoy it. I mean, I mean, have a good time. I've got you some cold brawn. Oh, that sounds delicious. I won't be back late. I'll be back before midnight. You don't have to hurry. You won't turn into a pumpkin. I don't know that. Longstreet we are naughty, aren't we? Well, uh, we haven't touched our supper, have we? Uh, and uh, what is this? This? What's this? Well, it's a... Uh, oh, oh, I see what you mean. Oh, yes. It's a, it's a new thing on the market. It, it keeps out drafts. Dra Street, you know. to a great grinding halt, if you want to know. All he's worried about is the press. Well, they've been on, of course. And? Oh, I've killed it, don't worry. We're playing it all down. I'm sitting on the lab reports. I don't care what the old man says, Tom. There is a pattern here, the most definite pattern. 
Is there anything in there? Well, I've been to the whole lot. Correspondence. Family, all that sort of thing. Yeah, well, what does it tell us? Well, they have one thing in common. If you say they all died mysteriously, I'll bloody kill you. Vesalius. What? Dr. Vesalius. It's a funny name. Who the hell's he? Well, they all worked for him at some time. And judging by the correspondence here, we're fairly close associates. Good, good, yes. What else? Nothing. Nothing? I see. You mean to say that after 24 hours diligent research, that is all you have been able to discover? Well, do we have an address for this man? An address? Oh, damn it all, Tom. Where does he live? This way. He's through here, sir. Thank you very much. Father. Father, there's someone to see you. Inspector Trout. From Scotland Yard. Detective Inspector. Good evening, sir. I I'm sorry to intrude like this, sir, but it is a, a very urgent matter. And I thought perhaps you might be of some assistance to us, sir. Ow. Oh. Three men... Three men in your profession have all died in the past week in most unusual circumstances. Inspector. Men in my profession die every day. Uh, you have your foot on my pliers. I'm sorry, sir. Thank you. Do the names... Hargreaves, Thornton and Dunwoody mean anything to you, sir? Welcome back to the show. We'll get back to the abominable Dr. Fibes soon. But first, we've got to do some mail, right? Yes, we have a little bit. Mail has come and mail will go. But today, we will do it before we get back to the show, right? Right. Right. First piece of mail, sir. Chantel from San Francisco. Chantel. I believe so. Chantel Siga. Oh, it's got the full address. Should I read it? No. All right. Nice handwriting. Oh, my goodness. If only Tangela could write like that. Now, you, you write like a doctor. She'll leave me a note, and it's like... I cannot even read it. You could read her writing, right? I'm used to it. You're used to it. All right. Chantel Sega in San Francisco says, Hello, Vincent Tangela and the unflappable... Mr. Livingston, unflappable, of all things. You know, if he was a duck, he'd be unflappable, too. He's kind of a penguin tonight, though. I want to thank you for bringing my childhood back to me. I didn't know he took it. She goes on. I used to watch the original Creature Features on KTVU at 11 p.m., way after my bedtime. I was scaring my little sister to death and having fun with it. I only have one favor to ask of you. Please play either the movie Deadly Friend from 1986 starring Christy Swanson or The Hidden from 1987, starring Kyle MacLachlan. These are both hilariously cheesy and right up Creature Features Alley. Again, thank you so much for stirring up fond memories. P.S. Mr. Livingston is a hoot with his dry humor, or lack thereof. Yeah, that's a, that's a two-handed compliment there. I don't all know right. which way to take it. It's, it's, uh, but she, she loves us all, so. I'll well, take it positive. All right, you take a positive. Uh, those two movies sound wonderful. We will look into those. And if our distributor says, I can get them, and that's the way he talks, he goes, I can get them, and he's got a cigar in his mouth, then uh, maybe we'll show him, and then you can see it, and relive your childhood, Chantel. And I cannot put this back. Up next, Mr. Livingston. From Ohio. Oh, look at this, Ohio. This came, UPS Media Mail, I never heard of this. There's media, media involved. Media Mail. It's, it, this is from Cheeseburger? Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. I don't think that's his real name. There's a joke in there. Or hers. All right, the letter. Hi. 
Love the show. My wife and I look forward to Saturday nights with the three dogs and all of you. For a moment there, I thought he was going to call us the dogs. But no, they have dogs that watch our show as well. Yeah, we have lots of canines watching the show. I don't know why. I think it's because Tangela's always got her dog on the show. And maybe they like... Saturday is a three-dog night. He does have a sense of humor, Chantel. You're right. All right. Uh, Everybody is talking about records nowadays. So I thought I would send one for each of you. Or I'm going to let you contend with this. And uh, death and horror sound effects for the lovely Tangella. Let's see. Death and... Oh, look at that. Oh, that's wonderful. They're actual vinyl records. Right. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, a jazz record for Livingston. I like Stan Getz, actually. All right. And uh, he seems cool and laid back, so I pegged him as a jazz bow. What's a jazz bow? A person who likes jazz. Well, I assume that, but it says a jazz bow. B-O. Oh, I thought it was B-E-A-U. No, I thought so, too. Jazz bow. Maybe it's a thing. We should Google that. Uh, And a copy of our new album, The Cleveland Steamers, for the one and only Vincent Van Dole. You all rock cheese and mm, Meredith Borger. Is that a real name? Cheese Borger? Let me see this album. Is this his band? Cleveland Steamers, 10 more... Oh my goodness, it's got dog poop on the cover, and this looks like your dog. Oh no, there he is, Scott Cheeseburger Bass. So his name's Scott. My goodness, all right, well, Scott you know what? This looks like a humorous album. And uh, he's got hate and love on tattoos. So, all right, we're gonna take a listen to that. And Isn't thank that you so punch? much, Scott, or Cheeseburger, for writing. And uh, we'll see you on the other side of the set. This is Which from is St. Charles, Missouri. St. Charles, Missouri. What was St. Charles famous for? I have no idea. St. Charles. Yeah, I wonder if there's a St. Chuck. I think it's St. Carl, perhaps. St. Carl. No, St. Charles, Missouri. All right. Oh, boy. There's stuff in here. I shall take the letters and pass this on to the young lady. Oh my goodness, this is covered with Halloween stickers, decals. Oh, for Tangella. Oh, look at this. All right, so these Halloween decals are all for you. It says for Tangella. All right, this is from Anne Marie Bateman in St. Charles, Missouri. And she goes, Dear Creature Features, I am a big fan of your show. I love the old black and white movies that you show. I would like pictures of everyone I made a haunted house for you. There's a sticker of a haunted house. Uh, I watch you on YouTube. Your show is the best. I live in St. Charles, Missouri. I like all of the movies you play. Here is my address to send the picture to me. Anne-Marie Bateman. All right, we will definitely send you a photo signed, we hope. Oh my goodness, she made that? With ice cream sticks. Yeah, she said she made a haunted house and I thought she just meant the stickers. That's fantastic. Yeah, that looks like our house if it were made from popsicle sticks, right? Yeah, and ghosts. We have ghosts as well. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Anne Marie, and we will definitely send you an autographed photo to Missouri. That it, Mr. Livingston? That's it. That is it for mail. If you would like to send us an email, send it to the email address you see right here. Or if you'd like to send us a wonderful tiny haunted house made of popsicle sticks, Send it to the mail address you see right here. We're going to get back to the abominable Dr. Fibes. And when we come back, we'll probably bring Andrew out to say hello. See you soon.
hard to believe. I'm, I'm sure of that, sir, but can you think of anything? Anything at all that would relate to the killing of these three men? Nothing. Nothing. So last week I was talking to Thornton. Hello. Yes, he is. It's for you. Thank you. Hello, Trout. I see. Where's that? Yes, all right. Ten minutes. Did you know Dr. Longstreet? You heard a what? Well, a, a violin or a cello or, or something. At half past two in the morning, woman? Yes. In the street? Yes, I told you. Don't keep on at me. I'm sorry. Like I said, I, I heard it. Then there was this car door banging. Well, I couldn't get off to sleep, so I cut came down to find some aspirins. The door was open a bit, and as I looked through, there he was. And then I rang for you lot. Well, that's all? Well, that's enough for one night. I mean, look at him, all white and everything. There's nothing except this and uh, that. Ah, oh, now, do you recognize this, madam? Ah, uh, uh, fingerprints. No, it's not mine. And it's certainly not his. Well, thank you, madam. That's all for the moment. You may go. We'll come back in the morning and take a full statement from you. Thank you, Mrs... Uh... Uh, Frawley. Thank you, Mrs. Frawley. Oh, he was a nice man. Good to me, he was in his own sort of way. Yeah. You were his... housekeeper? Whoever did it must have been a real pro. He's as dry as a bone. That is his bone. Poor devil, I bet he was still conscious when it happened. Do you think it can be the same? Oh, I don't think anymore, Tom. <laughs> uh, this is the object in question, sir. Oh, dear me, you've broken it. What, sir? It really is incredible, the amount of vandalism that there is around these days. I mean, I make something like this, a thing of beauty and a joy for everyone. Ah, you first did make day, it, sir. Uh, yes, of course I made it. I wish to establish that, sir. Yes. yes. Certainly I did. That's my mark on the back, then. Good, thank you. Now, can you tell me a little bit about it, please, sir? Yes, yes, certainly. It's one of a very unusual set, this. A set? Yes. There's more than one? Of course there's more than one. It's a set. Yes, well, <laughs> how many in the set, sir? Ten. Ten? Ten. Yes, I see. W were they all the same? Well, of course they weren't all the same. Do you want ten amulets looking exactly the same? <laughs> Each of them had a different symbol. I see. Well, who ordered the set? It's a lady. Oh, a woman, eh? No, no. A lady. Yes, I remember the occasion well. She, she came in here, she gave me a set of working drawings. She paid half the cost there and then in cash, and the other half later. When she returned for them, she was absolutely delighted with them, as well she might be. That, that's beautiful craftsmanship, you know. Yes. You don't often get craftsmanship no. like that nowadays. Could so, I take another uh, look no, at well, it? Well, one more question, if I might. Uh, yes? What did she look like? Well, she was a tall, tall. attractive, attractive, young lady. Mm -hmm. She didn't speak much, as I remember, but she was... Um, she was Smart, sir. Fashionable. Ah, yes, sir. Uh, can you tell me anything else about her, sir? No, I don't think so. Aren't you going to write down fashionable? I think I can remember that, sir. Oh, good. No, as a matter of fact, she didn't stay very long. And then, of course, there was the uh, money to be counted. Yes, yes. Well, thank you very much, Nick. Oh, so you've been a great help. Yes, I'm sorry yes. to take up so much of your valuable time. Uh, reasonably valuable, yes, it <laughs> certainly is. Good day, sir. Good day, Inspector Pike. Trout, sir. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Oh, by the way... Psst, psst, psst. Sir? Uh, that sign, uh, that mark on the amulet, I don't know whether this is of any assistance, but uh, it is, I believe, Hebrew. Thank you very much, sir. Hebrew. Uh, this is it, sir. 
It's a Hebrew symbol for blood. Oh, I see. Mm. Part of the Ketach. The what, sir? The Ketach. The ten curses visited upon the pharaohs before Exodus. Here, I show you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> they were all uh, ancient maledictions. Solemn curses. Uh, anathemas. Wished upon the pharaohs for keeping the Israelites in bondage. Ah, here it is. But, uh, all this would just be myth, of course, sir. Oh, I think not. No? No. There is little doubt that the plagues did occur. Those who are distant now as to seem a myth. I see. Well, what form would the curses take, sir? Oh, I don't know. Such as the uh, curse of boils, of bats. Frogs? Of frogs, yes. And the curse of blood. I see, sir. Yes, I see. Uh, the, these ten curses, would they follow any particular order? Oh, that is a point that Talmudic scholars have debated for generations. But there is no doubt that the classical tradition is uh, the curse of boils, bats, frogs, the curse of blood, the curse of rats, hail, the beasts, the locusts, of course, the death of the firstborn, and then, finally, of darkness. Darkness, Rabbi? Yes. The final curse upon the land. To end forever the sleep of man. prepared a little uh, mathematical equation for you, Inspector. These files represent all of the surgical cases on which I've served over a decade, some uh, 1,200. As you know, uh, modern surgery is all a matter of teamwork, sometimes requiring the services of oh, a dozen or more people, interns, residents, other specialists. Quite so, sir. Now, ruling out all the cases that are over five years old, the uh, that Dr. Dunwoody, our bat victim, resumed his practice in London. That leaves us 37 cases on which I worked with any two of the four now dead men. A scant dozen with three, but only one. Just one case where I worked with all of them. Victoria Regina Fibes. I think they called it Fibes. Victoria Regina Fibes, born November the 27th, 1893. Married, no children, diagnosis, immediate radical resection. Well, what happened? We were too late. Nine killed you. Nine shall die and be returned your loss. Nine times nine, nine killed you, nine shall die, nine eternities in doom. Very attractive. Quite beautiful. A strange presence, even in death. And the husband? Dr. Anton Fibes. He was in Switzerland. We cabled him. But as he raced back, his car went off the cliff and... He was burned to death. 
You quite sure of that, sir? I know it must be a tempting theory for you, Inspector, but they were interred at the same time in the family vault just outside of London. Were they fond of each other? Well, they seem so. Completely, completely devoted. Of course, you realize, don't you, what your equation proves? Someone, some madman, has condemned the whole surgical team for her death. I mean, everybody in this list here, including yourself. Obviously, you're going to put the remaining people involved under police protection. Mm -hmm. Although, heaven knows, from what? From the guitar, sir, if you know what that is. Isn't that the uh, curse of the pharaohs? That's right, sir, quite right. Someone is using these ancient biblical curses to kill everyone associated with the Fives operation. Despite my previous protestation, I see a few of you have still not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet. Please, I implore of you to do so. Thank you. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, I keep wanting to call this film The uh, Abominable Snowman. Yes. Yeah, The Abominable Dr. Fibes. Why don't they use a different adjective? It would have I been don't know. Somewhat better, I don't know. Anyways, welcome back to Creature Features. As you know already, we're watching The Abominable Dr. Fibes with Vincent Price. And uh, I've got Livingston with me, because we have no guests. And uh, Andrew has joined us. And you know, in case you did not know, he was the... Poor hit and run accident at the commencement with the introduction. That was well done. And he survived. It was a nice performance. Again. Again? No, no, no. You did quite well. You did quite well. And he, the, the, the mask is uh, not quite Dr. Fibes, but it's the closest we could find, right? Yes. Is it comfortable? No. 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 All right. Although it's much more comfortable than getting hit with a roller pin. No, it's true. You know, we, we removed all the weapons prior to filming that and uh she has them stashed no well, now she's using kitchen utensils no, she can turn anything into a that's a, one of tangela's skills is is if you need an expert on turning anything into a weapon she could do it she can weaponize anything no no, no. I, she's a, literally poked me with this comb before the pokey comb she poked me with the pokey comb before anyways uh, what do you think of the film andrew I like the film. It's been a long time since I've seen it. You've seen it prior? Long time ago. I've never seen it. No. You know, I, I, I think it's a rule. It's part of my contract that I cannot watch the film before because I have an issue with telling spoilers. No, I, I, I say, look, there's this thing coming up, right? You do Like, that. you know, I was going to say at the beginning of the film that Vincent Price does not speak for the first 30 minutes in the film. Do you notice? Doesn't speak once. And, and Tom says that he had, they had his lips sealed with something? Yes, yes, he did. They glued his mouth shut. They should maybe do that for me, huh? He's not saying much tonight. I said nothing. He's not saying much tonight. I did not intimate Anyways, either. how are things around uh, the, the manor? Everything all right? All the plumbing working all right? I've not seen Tracy the plumber. Everything so far is pretty good. Right. I do want to bring up something. Maybe in these opening skits or whatever, we could maybe do them on nights when Tangela's not around. Oh, well, she's always here, though. I mean... Maybe put her on her... Have her go do an errand or something. Right, right. No, uh, you know, I do not think that would fly very well with her because I, I think she would... She would know that you had something to do with it, and she would she would probably proceed to beat you even worse, knowing Revenge. that you arranged for something like this, right? No, it can happen. Yeah. It can happen. All right, boys. Once you say we get back to the uh, Bonable Doctor Fives, 
Abominable. Abominable. Dr. Fibes. And uh, let's see how this movie progresses, eh? Sounds good. And maybe we'll make some popcorn. Sounds good. Right, right. All right. Off we go, Dr. Fibes. That's all I'm going to call it from now on. 1971. See you soon. Bye. Spot of trouble, Benson. See if you can help her out. Hello? What have we got here? Ah, needed some help, miss? Hail, rats, beast, locust. Take your pick. Oh, there's death of the firstborn and, of course, darkness. Darkness? Yes, darkness. Coffee. Thank you. On this list of Vesalius, there's five people who are in danger. There's Hedgepath. Kitage. No, it's pronounced Kitai. Oh. Whitcomb, the woman knows Alan and Vesalius himself. I've located everybody else, but so far we can't find Kitai. We think he's somewhere in Europe. What about the Fives estate in Switzerland? Well, the insurance and bank accounts were closed after his death was reported. So his money's still over there? No. Two years ago, the bulk of the money was transferred here to England. To whose account? Oh, no. But later, it was withdrawn by a woman in cash. In fact, the whole estate was transferred into her name. A woman? She tall, attractive, hardly speaks a word. Right. Oh, now, I'm very interested in her. It's a quarter to three. There's no one in the place except you and me. So set him up, Joe. I've got a little story I think you ought to know. We're drinking, my friend. To the end of a brief episode So make it one for my baby And another one for the road It's over here, Inspector. I found him sitting off to the side of the road, sir. He's quite out of it, I'm afraid. In shock. You won't get much out of him, Bordell. Well, what happened to him? Mm -hmm. uh, I see. Is that the car? Yes, sir. We trace the owner, sir. It's a man called Hedgepath. Dr. Hedgepath? Well, what's all this? He's in the back, sir. It's frozen solid.
the curse of hail in the bloody middle of nowhere. Take a look at this, then. He worked it off the motor. He brought the internal temperature down to at least 100 degrees below zero. Massively, he didn't feel much, sir. <sighs> like hell, he didn't. It's not made, Father. You can still move. Oh, well, uh, we'll finish tomorrow, then. Up you go. You, you wouldn't like to hear some... I'm afraid I'm not very good company tonight. You read a little. I must play to you tomorrow. Old Darrow put me onto it. It's a super piece. Darrow? You know, the chap at the music shop. Mm. I always thought he was such a bore. But what a fantastic memory he's got. Get him talking about the great organists, Bridges, Drew, and Fives. He knew them all. Anyway, night, Dad. Good night. Did you know this man? Excuse me, Mr. Darrow. <laughs> Did you know this man? Sixpence. Yes, but... Did you know him? what the old chap meant. He couldn't tell you anything else. He kept insisting in his strange way that Fives has been his patron for years. Mm. And still is. He didn't tell you what he looks like. Oh, he's blind as a... Well, he can hardly see at all. Well, he might not be able to see, but there's something I very much want to have a look at. May I use your phone? What do you expect to find here? I don't know exactly, sir, but we've drawn a blank everywhere else. Fools. Fools. They'll have the worms soon enough. What happened to the money, the Fives estate? Oh, that's an immensely complicated matter, sir. It seems he had money invested all over Europe. We're, we're still investigating no, that, sir. Out, uh, where did he get all those degrees? Oh, no, I can tell you, sir. He took uh, a degree in music in Germany at Heidelberg. And uh, another one in Paris at the... Sorbonne? Yes. Uh, now, that was a PhD in theology. Theology? Hmm. That rather neatly explains his knowledge of the Old Testament. The guitar, sir. Please. Does 
anyone ever visit this place? Well, someone has. Are you sure that... Well, here he is, Anton Fives. Right next to his wife. Let's take a look. <clears throat> Notice that smell. Roses? Oh, more like formaldehyde. On your fingers. Careful. Anton Fives, now are you satisfied? Well, I'm not sure that I am, really, sir. Now, just think of it. All this proves is that somebody was incinerated in that car crash. Well, the Swiss police have told us that already. Exactly. But suppose for the sake of argument that that somebody was not Fives at all, but his chauffeur. And Fives is back in London. Just like the old man told you. She was not incinerated. Let's have a look at her. Yeah, this is Mike, Wichita, Kansas. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoy your show. It's really good for an old old guy like me. It's it's fun to, to watch the old spook shows. Thank you. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Creature Features. We're watching Dr. Fibes, 1971. Good film. And a uh, little piece of trivia about this one. Uh, Vincent Price kept laughing when they were making this film, and it caused his makeup to crack every single time. He must have loved that. No, he, he, he loved it, and they, they fixed it. Oh, look, look what he brought for you. Oh, finally. He's so nice. How many times so have I been asking that? for that one? Where, where are you going? Why don't you stay and watch the film with us? I have things to do. He's got things to do. All right. Well, anyways, uh, yeah, no, so Vincent Price was always laughing during the making of this film. Which, you know, it's understandable. It's, it's like a comedy, right? It's like a bloody comedy. Mm. But I don't mean bloody in the British way. I mean bloody as in actual bloody. Bloody. Gore bloody. Gore bloody. Right, right. So uh, what's new with you, Mr. Andrew? Mm, just doing my thing around the, the mansion and voiding Tangella and well, trying to and you know, healing I, my wounds. And I, I've got a bit of a peeve with you on this because when you say you avoid her, but I always hear stories about how you tease her. Never. No? So she's always telling me that you tease her continuously. You know, she's really not a bad girl. I mean, you know, she, she takes care of small animals. I saw her the other day. She was mending the wing of a small robin that had fallen out of its nest. After she tore it off. No, she's, and uh, I see her planting flowers on the roadway, and she, she's, she's actually a, quite a nice person. You know, maybe if you just gave her a chance and didn't tease her all the time. Those are some lovely words for the spawn of Satan. Oh, you know, I, I think that's fairly strong. But uh, anyways, uh, we're going to uh, get back to this film in a moment. Don't forget, we've got a Patreon, which 
hopefully you'll go visit. That gives you a way to support the show, which is kind of nice. And then don't forget to subscribe to our channel because it's quite important that you... Subscribe to our station so that uh, we can afford to buy more popcorn. We'll be right back after the next segment. See you soon. I love my sweet queen, my noble wife, severed too quickly, too cruelly from this life. I remain and suffer to bring delivery of your pain, of fires drawn and of memories met. Soon we shall hold our two precious hearts in single time. This one here, Kitai. Oh, however you pronounce it. Shen is on his way down there. Yes, sir. Crow, I've been looking for you. Now, this is most unsettling. Thank God the newspapers have been slow in picking up these stories so far. Well, we've managed to withhold most now, of I don't propose to go into the series of this, Crow, but if the press do get hold well, of this... We'd have a disaster on our hands. What the hell do you think we've got at the moment? Now, if we don't handle this with kid gloves, there'll be questions in the house. This whole thing's a political time bomb, you realise that? We're all of us as vulnerable as hell. Especially me. The men are working as hard as they can. It's not hard enough. Now, Crow, you can't stare to me. Are you? What's your name? Trout, sir. Oh, Trout? Oh, what the hell are you doing standing there? Where's your jacket? Um, now, you get out there with the rest of them. There's a madman out there, and I want him brought in. Here. Now. Brakes on. Throttle closed. Throttle closed. Switches off. Switches off. Throttle set. Throttle set. Contact. Contact.
Well, you should have driven faster. Faster? As it was, I got there a couple of minutes before the locals. Yeah, but two minutes after the crash. I was going over 90 miles an hour through the outskirts of the town. I thought the damn thing was going to explode a couple of times. Yeah. Who's, whose car is it, by the way? Well, God knows. We got the call about Kitai. I came down into the yard and got the fastest car I could see. But, I mean, it is well of ours. Well, it must be. There's a, a police book in the, in the front. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's going to need a damn good service now, though. A couple of the oil seals have gone. Hey, you! I... What's your name? Pike! Uh, Trout, sir. Why has my car been moved? You... Is it your car, sir? Well, of course it's my car. It's a very sophisticated piece of machinery. It's not to be moved at all, not even pushed. Do you understand? Perfectly, sir. The engine's not running yet. Uh, have we located this fellow Kitaj yet? Pronounced Kitai, sir. Well, uh, that's a bit of a long story, so I wanted to talk to you about him. Do you see the fact uh, is that... I'll the... expect your report in the morning. I can't wait now. Oh, I say, any more news on this fellow Phoebes? Uh, Phoebes, sir? Are you in the habit of contradicting your superiors, Bream? Well, we are on to him, sir. But where are you concentrating the search? I mean, where was he last seen? Highgate, sir. Highgate? Good. Whereabouts? Well, the cemetery, sir. The cemetery? Yes, sir. That's where he's buried. Good. Well done, Perch. Nurse. Nurse Allen. Yes. Yes, I've got men all around the hospital. Desarius? I've got him covered, too. And that just leaves that fellow... Dr. Wickham? Yes, yeah, Dr. Wickham. Well, we're going to take him off to the country for a few days if you'll come with us. If you'll come with us? I appreciate your concern, Sergeant, but you must understand that I owe it to my patients to be back in London within the week. Of course, Doctor, I guarantee we'll have you back here within a few days. Let me take that, sir. Yes. Inspector Shroud, sir. I must say, I feel rather like a head of state. Mm -hmm. Right now, Be careful, son. Easy does it. I think it's a left hand thread. Yes, it is. Oh. It's coming. Yeah. Oh, Gentlemen, can't we have a little quiet in this club?
Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. If you don't know how it works, read the manual. It's brass. He's cast a thing in bloody brass. It appears to have been fired by a catapult, sir. So. Oh, brilliant. find two better hemispheres without sharp north, without declining west, my face in thine eye, thine in mine appears, and true plain hearts do in the faces Rest within twenty four hours, my work will be finished, and then, my precious jewel, I will join you in your setting. We shall be reunited forever in a secluded corner of the great Elysian field of the beautiful beyond. Seventy men are active on this case, trying to find a man who, according to you, has been buried once. It's one of Trout's theories, sir. Well, I don't know about Trout's theories, but I had a belly full of Trout's practice. Oh, I'm talking about you. Now, it seems to me that with immaculate precision, you've been arriving on the scene just after the victim's death. At this time, due no doubt to some organisational oversight, you arrived there before the crime. But, as I've come to expect from you two, that made little difference. It was still committed. A brass unicorn has been catapulted across a London street and impaled an eminent surgeon. Words fail me, gentlemen. Yes, excuse me, sir. Where are you off to now, Trout? The lavatory, sir. Highly appropriate. Evening, Constable. Sir? Everything quite normal? Nothing to report, sir. Good.
the whole place is completely sealed. It's as simple as that. Simplicity isn't exactly the word I'd use in dealing with this man, Inspector. I've got half the yard, sir, plus some of the local boys and a small mobile unit here. I've got cars all round the place, here, here and here, and, of course, some plain clothes men. So, unless he drops in on us from above in a balloon, which I wouldn't put past him, she should be safe. Uh, supposing uh, he's in the building already. I hope he is. Because if he's in, he can't get out. And we've got him. <laughs> After all, he has killed seven people in the last 14 days. Dr. Vesalius, oh. what on earth are you doing here? You're not involved in this charade, are you? I am afraid I am, nurse. Doctor, <laughs> these men have told me that I must not leave the hospital building. Nurse, now, why me? Home. Surely that's not right. Nurse, Helen, Just please. what is going on here? Please, miss, if you'd be so good as to go to your room, we'll have your supper sent up to you. I've already eaten, thank you, officer. Now, Inspector Dr. Vesalius... Inspector Trout is doing his best. Now, please, you must go to your room and stay there for at least 24 hours. <laughs> now, don't say a word, please. I know just what your feelings are. Please come. The police have reason to believe. And just what do the police have reason to believe, Doctor? Uh, do you remember assisting me in an operation four years ago? Yes. Well, in connection with that, the police have reason to believe that I... A man is going to try to kill you. Kill me? Yes, sir. Within a few hours. I'm sorry. I don't know how you expect me to sleep with all this going on, Doctor. I suggest you take a sleeping pill. Good night. Good night. Don't worry about it, sir. Sooner or later, he's going to get stopped by the oldest snag of all, human error. No, human error won't stop him. Why? What do you mean? He's had years to hide, to plot this damnable thing. He's compelling himself to follow exactly the classic death pattern of the guitar. It's a psychic force that holds a man together, this maniacal precision. If we could just throw it off, interrupt the cycle, then he might be stopped by his own inflexible standards.
any curses left. Yes. Uh, of course, the, um, the thought does occur, if you'll pardon the liberty, sir, that it could be your turn tonight. I've considered that. I have a feeling he's saving something special for me that I'll be last. After all, I was chief surgeon on the case. Yes, well, if he keeps to the classic pattern, it should be the darkness for you, sir. Though heaven knows what that could be. Have you, um, have you considered the death of the firstborn, sir? Well, the fact that my older brother is dead should surely exclude me from that particular curse. Mm. Well, you must just resign yourself to the fact that I'm going to remain by your side until we apprehend this man. Oh, thank you. Not at all, sir. What about your firstborn? Stanley! Ah. Get two cars, take the doctor home, put a guard around his Thank house, God. alert the local division, and report back here. Try right. to protect him. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Uh, stay tuned. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, you should you should be a celebrity spokesmodel for Orville Redenbacher. So I think it would be nice. Very nice. Anyways, uh, welcome back to Creature Features. We're watching the uh, end portion of Abominable Dr. Fibes, 1971. Vincent Price, Joseph Cotton, our director, Tom, has just informed me that the Joseph Cotton actor... Uh, could not remember his lines during this entire film, so the crew kept trying to help him. But uh, Vincent Price would not only memorize his lines, but he would memorize the lines of anybody he was interacting with. So he would tell Joseph Cotton his lines. Can you imagine that? I mean, I cannot do this. This I could never be an actor because I can never memorize lines. Mm. Right? Can you memorize lines? Sometimes. All right. No, I, I can't do it. I was going to say, next time you have Livingston go out, tell him to get some salt and some butter. Oh, no, you tell him. So, uh, anyways, uh, this movie's fun. Uh, I think we should get back to the movie, wrap it up, and then uh, when we come back, we're going to find out what you're doing next. We'll get Tangela out here and uh, maybe ask Livingston to clean up this mess she made. Or oh, we should make her clean it up, eh? I didn't make it. Right. No. We'll make ten to do it. All right, we'll see you on the other side of the movie. Don't go away after the credits because we're going to be sitting here wondering what in God's name happened to our wonderful friends at home. So stick around. We'll be back after the credits. See you soon. The back door was hanging off. The lock had been forced. Bit of a struggle upstairs by the look of it. Well, the lad's been taken all right. Stay here with Vesarius. I'll get back to Trout. Poor little devil.
boy's gone. Oh, no. Any sign of fives? No, not at all. Well, we'll check on Nurse Allen and then we'll get over there. How's he taking it, Miss Alias? You can imagine. Yeah. We're doing everything we can, sir. Perhaps a little brandy might help. There must have been something I could have done to prevent this. see you. Where are you, Fives? I must speak. Fives, where is my son, Fives? The organ plays till midnight. The large house in Maldine Square. Come alone. I'm going alone. Perhaps he'll trade my life for my son's. If you think you can reason with him, then you're as mad as he is. Child. Oh, no, we're coming with you. We'll break the place open. Your men have made very little contribution to this ghastly affair. Their presence there could only accelerate the death of my son. I'm sorry, sir, but I cannot allow you to go there alone. My son's life is a state. Every possible precaution, sir, oh. but I cannot allow you to go there alone. I am prepared to use force if necessary. Oh. I'm very sorry, sir, but you are my responsibility. All right, all right, all right, Trout. I'll do whatever you say, at least this. Time for me to make a telephone call, I hope. If you're quick, so yes. Your no brandy. Ugh. I'm sorry, too, Trout.
Dr. Vesalius. I have come for my son. He will die at midnight. If you must take a life, take mine. I will have killed nine times in my life, Dr. Vesalius. How many murders can be attributed to you? None. I did not kill your wife. No? I tried to save her. With a knife in your hand, Doctor, I have no faith in your profession. I was told after my crash that I would never speak again. The doctors were, of course, wrong. For as you see and can hear, I have used my knowledge of music and acoustics to recreate my voice. You don't have to remind me of your ingenuity, Dr. Fibes. Where? Where is my son? May I give you one final reminder, Dr. Vesalius? You will see your son under circumstances which may bring back memories to you. What is it you want? The skill of your hands, Doctor. I am giving your son the same chance that my wife had. You need not be alarmed. He has already been anesthetized. Your wife, no, Fibes. But you I will kill. But you can't, Doctor. I am already dead. Your son needs you. Sergeant! Are you receiving me, Vesalius? That is an X-ray of your son's rib cage. You will see from it that a tiny key has been lodged close to his heart. It will unlock the halter around your son's neck and will free the trolley. If you are wondering why you need to free the operating table, then I suggest you look above his head, doctor. In a few moments, acid will be released into that tube. It will creep down, slowly, inexorably. It will take six minutes to reach the outlet over his face. Exactly six minutes, doctor.
I imagine you are becoming almost as tired of seeing me as I am of making these messages. Please subscribe. Amen. Damn 
head off. We'll need an ambulance for them. Well, what about... Huh? Right. The two of you, get downstairs and bring that boy up here. The rest of you, keep searching the house. We have got to find fives. But where the hell is he? Where the devil did this come from? Well, what comes out must go down. Brilliant. Uh, uh, no, don't catch it, sir. Much better leave it to us. Never know, it could be a trap. He's gone. Vanished. That's bloody impossible. That still leaves the final curse. Darkness. Well, he'll be working on it. Wherever he is.
And so ends the abominable Dr. Fives. Yeah, what a way to go. He injected that stuff into him, embalming fluid, and then the lid comes down, and there it goes. And you know what? They left it open for a sequel. Part D. There's at least one sequel to this film. There's maybe more, right? There's a couple of sequels, yes, right? Yes. More sequels, so who knows? Maybe we'll show another one. And why, why is Paul Livingston cleaning up this mess? You know, you cannot waste popcorn like this. It, it goes to waste. That's terrible. Yes, it does. You cannot give popcorn to birds. Do birds eat popcorn? No? I don't know. Yes. Yes? Indeed. All right. Oh, well, so, uh, pop, but they, they don't pop it themselves. They prefer the corn kernels. So you're giving them corn in a format that they do not appreciate. I don't know about this. You need to start being nice to Andrew because, you know, I, I was trying to explain to him that you're actually a nice person and you proved to him that you are not. So you need to start being nice. Anyways, what did you think of the film? Andrew? I like this film. It's a good film, eh? It's a good film. No, no, no. Compared to the normal schlock we serve on a Saturday night, it was not too bad now, was it? Mm -hmm. Bumping them up. Yep, yep. All right, well, what do you got going on next? Anything fun? Mm, lawn needs some work and uh, some of the gutters. After right. the rains we had. No, we to... right. The, the leaves come down yeah. in the gutters, yeah. and then you have to uh, clean those out, or else it like clogs, clogs up. things up. Right, right. So... All right. Well, you know, I, I'd recommend that uh, when you're up on the ladder that uh, you're on the opposite side of the house from you know who. I have a lookout. Right, right. No, that's a smart idea. All right, so you're doing that. How about uh, you, Mr. Livingston? Anything uh, new and exciting in the works? No. Oh. He's cleaning up popcorn for now. Anyways, and uh, what am I doing this week? I, I'm, I, I think I'm going to pick next week's film. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to watch one movie this week. And I'm going to spend the rest of the time playing the pipe organ because I've got nothing better to do around mm. here. Oh, God, no. Oh, come on. It's not that loud. Help me cut the grass. No, he says, he says the, the, the entire manor shakes when I play the pipe organ. It's like thunder. It's like thunder. It's like rock and roll, baby. All right, we're done, right? That's if it's not? That's it. We're good. All right, thank you so much for watching the show. We greatly appreciate you spending your Saturday night with us because, you know, you could be doing something quite productive. Instead, you decide to stay with us, which is wonderful. We hope uh, we'll see you next week. We'll have a different uh, show on Saturday. We'll have a movie on Friday and uh, maybe even something on Wednesday as well. Who knows? We'll see. Don't forget we love you. See you next time. So, uh, Andrew, you know, with, with this robe and the popcorn all over you, I'm thinking you could... You could be like King Popcorn and create your own brand of, of popping corn. This show's corny enough. <laughs>